Okay, so today I'm going to be working on a hot case uh, lamp set. It's for where we put pizzas, or well, where you would put food, I would guess, um, just to keep it warm, the top side, and then underneath there is a separate unit that is a hot plate. Um, and so that covers the bottom, but when you have pizza, you want to keep the cheese warm, so you need these heat lamps. So there's a short on this heat lamp. Uh, I'm probably not going to be talking much while I'm recording, um, but I will probably add in words later on in the cut. But this is just explaining. These are also going to come in handy. You're going to see in a second why I'm going to use these uh, to color code what wires what. And here we go. This right here is how it connects. It spins onto the bottom of that tubing. And what will happen is, is that if they don't unscrew that top right there, because of the way it connects, the wires will spindle together how it is right there. That's what causes the shorts. Right here, I am marking the wires with red tape, um, more so so that way it can stay together. On this part, you can see that I took the bar off. This is the same exact setup as the one behind it where those three heat lamps are in the back. This is with them taken off. And yeah, you have to take the whole bar off and then the conduits ran through the bar, just like that. Hello. So I'm in the middle of this repair. Um, Basically, there was a short and one of the wires that fed the heat lamp. But the problem with these heat lamps is, is that the wire runs literally all the way from the switch that you turn it on and off at to the light bulb itself. So if there's any type of break, typically people don't stuff too much extra wire in there. So once you snap that or if there's a break in it, you have to run a whole new line because the conduit that the light bulb runs down is so skinny that the two wires in the ground that run through that little skinny tube are only big enough to just accommodate those three wires. So any type of connectors or anything like that, even if you were to do um, heat shrink wrap, which I wouldn't suggest, um, it still is going to uh, be a hard time when it snaps finally. So going down to an electrical supply house that's local to here, and I'm gonna get, uh, looks like 18 gauge wires, what it reads, but I'm taking this bundle down with me so I can get the exact wires. So that way I'm not hoping and praying that what I'm doing is gonna work. Um, I can confirm that there's voltage there, so it is a simple fix. This is just showing you how to rewire something without um, having to have a Einstein brain of like photo memory. So, yeah. Okay, so got what I want to say at Home Depot, but I had to go to an electrical supply house for this. It's called support wire. <clears throat> Not sure what it's used for, but uh, I'm going to put things back just how I took them apart. And then this isn't the same gauge. It's a little bit bigger, but it should be fine. It's only one bigger size. So yeah, hopefully things go smooth and we'll have these lights back on. The white zero and the red zero, if you pause it, go back to it, uh, it will show you the in and the out. And right here I'm taking it apart because I actually have to get to where the terminal connects to the wire. And to do that you have to take the whole lighting ballast apart. So there they are again, the screws. Okay, so most common issues with these heat lamps is that there's usually about six or eight of them. And when the light bulb goes out, they quickly change it, which is like a twisting motion. Um, but what will happen is, is that because one piece pretty much free floats from, it's, just, it's suspended. So this really doesn't connect to anything except a plate and that plate is able to move. So when you twist it so many times, this happens, but that's not really an issue until you get down to here where these wires begin to touch. And then you start to get a short because this black wire is going to touch this white wire 
and they're separated just barely but the one that did burn out i should have videoed it first but uh it was actually touching and that was causing a spark so like we talked about how i talked about this one earlier this um non-insulated wire just a raw wire i guess it's called a support wire and i'm piecing together that when the electrician came he replaced it with a completely different ballast that's not this style of ballast and i'm pretty sure that that's why it, it kept tripping um and he just decided to completely shut that light down so that's where it's at right now um i will record as i repair so yeah this is what i was referring to earlier about the space needed for the wires there's literally only enough space for those three wires to go in that skinny black feed that feeds the light um this right here is me running the conduit through it is and was a huge mess um you just have to make sure that you keep the tape to the right ones that you need Okay, so um, the repair took me like way longer than I thought it would. I was gonna say than I think it should, but um, kind of half and half. I had to repair a short and it ended up being two shorts and there was a third one forming, uh, as you can see in the video. Um, so yeah, with those lamps, what happens is, is the way that the light bulb ballast actually holds on to the structure of the lamp, it's able to twist so what happens is when they replace the light bulb it will twist and twist and nobody notices it until it has a short but the problem is is that from that light switch that you see in the video to the actual heat lamp is about I'd say 10 to 15 feet depending on which lamp the problem is is that they only run one wire with no break in it so you have your hot and your neutral going out and coming back but if the wire for some reason gets snapped or if it um, has some sort of short on it, you have to replace that entire run. Now, I didn't replace that entire run, as you can see. I stopped halfway, and that's because for the next time that either I have to get in there or someone else has to get in there, they're able to just disconnect it right there, and then all they have to do is run one line run instead of how I had to run each lamp's line. I had to run a new one. So I had to run six no, nine total lines uh, to get this thing going. Another thing that I want to note too is that there's what's called a suspension line. I had no idea what that was. Uh, I guess it just puts a ground on top of the light. And I can see why because the heat lamps do draw a lot of wattage and it gets really hot in there. So if it does short out because it burns out the bulb ballast, then I could see why you'd want to ground there. Um, and that's partly why it wasn't working when I first came here. Uh, because the guy just put a neutral and a hot and that was pretty much it. He didn't care to run what's called a suspension wire. I'm not sure what that is. If you guys know, drop a comment below. Um, but I went to a local supply house, got new suspension wire, ran that, and um, yeah, everything works like it should. And good to go.